Hello and welcome to my video. As some of you might know, I've got a new motherboard recently and I want to show you how to change your motherboard in your computer. So you're going to need a lot of anti-static bags that I've got there and we're going to need to start disassembling the case. So I've got this airflow thing that takes air from the front fan and the hard drives and feeds it in properly into the computer. No real need for it, but hey, we've got to remove it anyway. And then you want to start to remove all the power connectors. And my graphics card has two on it, so I'm just going to fiddle with those to get them off, just like that. And then we need to remove some of these fans. So this is the memory fan. You don't need to do it in this order, of course. It's just the order I did it in. Took my Corsair Dominator memory fan off. And then I removed the motherboard power supply. This is the big 24-pin one. So I took it away there for the moment. And I'm going to use my second camera to give you a close-up on this point. Because your PCI Express slot has a clip there like this. And you need to take the graphics card out. Of course you'll need to unscrew it from the case if you have screw mounts for it. I don't, but you might. And then you want to put that in a nice anti-static bag so it's not damaged while you're changing your motherboard over. And do this with all your PCI cards as well, that's my TV card. And this is my Wi-Fi card, PCI Express times one. And now we're going to move on to the SATA ports, we need to take all the cables out of those. These will go in your new motherboard. Try to remember which hard drive is which, it doesn't really matter, but it's a good idea to remember that. There we go, all out. So we're just freeing the motherboard up from every other component that's in your computer. I'm moving on to the front panel bit now. This is your power LED, power switch, reset switch, and hard drive light, as well as the speaker. You just take them all out of there. And this is the USB as well, and the audio, and the firewire. You can have all sorts plugged in down there. That's the speaker, of course. Now the 4-pin ATX uh, power supply, you need to remove this as well. And then your motherboard should be completely free. So I'm going to take the RAM out. You need to remove the clips on both sides. If your motherboard has clips on both sides. My new motherboard doesn't, but my old one does. I'll show you later. So take your RAM out, which is normal RAM. Nothing really interesting about it. Take it out and put it in your anti-static bag. I've now moved on to the CPU fan. You need to unplug this from your motherboard, of course. And then mine comes apart into two pieces. So we've got the fan and the main bit. And the main bit screws onto the board, sort of. It has clips that go onto the board, but the clips screw onto the bracket, as you can see just there. So we need to take our screwdriver and undo those, like so. And once we've done that, the bracket just falls off. And then you'll need to carefully remove the screw. So once that out, we can just take the CPU cooler off, like so, revealing a lot of heat paste and a big thing. This does not need to go in an anti-static case, it's just a big metal thing. However, that will. So we need to get all this heat paste off, use a piece of kitchen roll, I found's good. But you can get some solvents for it and you can get all sorts of fun things to get rid of the paste. So that's my processor, the AMD Phenom 2 1055T. And we now need to remove it. There's an arm on the side of an AMD processor that you just put up. However, Intel you'll have to move the uh, bracket style thing. I'm not really sure what they call it. And to transfer the CPU, you need to align the triangles. I assume Intel are the same as AMD. And now then AM2 Plus and AM3 socket are both aligned in the same way. So you can just transfer it over just like that. Once it's in, it shouldn't have any resistance. It should just fall into it. And then you need to put the arm back down. It does take a little bit of force. So don't be surprised if it's quite hard. And the next step is actually removing the motherboard from the case. So there's lots of little black screws all around it. Yours may not be black, yours may be silver. And you just take them all out, they're all over the motherboard, so you've got to search for them. And once they're all out, you can just remove the motherboard like so. This was a little bit tight, we'll say, but out it comes. Motherboard removed. Try not to hold it by any connections. I see I'm holding it by the heatsink, which I know is very secure to the board. But you can also hold it using the CPU bracket. And don't forget to take out the back port for your motherboard. And put your new one in, like so. Again, this can be a bit, little bit fiddly, but it does just go on to the case. All you need to do is push it in. It's very easy, very simple. And before you fit your board, you need to make sure that your screws are all aligned. So you can see the uh, brass things in the case. They're actually your screws actually screw into. And this motherboard is a bit bigger than my old board, so it's got some screws missing that you need to put in. So I'm going to move the camera down so you can see what I mean. When the motherboard is actually in place, you will see little brass strings through the screw holes. 
So you can see that on the top left one, but on the top right one there isn't one. So we need to rectify this. So you end up with something like this. Every screw hole on the motherboard has a little brass thing underneath it ready to be screwed in. So you better get screwing it down to the board. This will secure it so it doesn't move around and damage itself. And once the motherboard is secure, you can put your RAM back in. Now my motherboard only has clips at the top, not the bottom. So slide it in from the bottom first to the top. And make sure it's all fastened down. I've now moved on to refitting the graphics card. You don't need to play with that clip I showed you earlier, it just slots down into the slot. We will now move on to refitting the CPU cooler. This is some Arctic Silver 5 heat paste. Now this bit doesn't screw off as I'm trying to show you it does, it pulls off just like this. Now you don't want to use a lot of this stuff, this is just to bridge the microscopic holes between the CPU and the CPU cooler. So if you use too much it's going to actually start insulating the heat. So you don't want to use much more than this stuff. That is about the right amount all you need. As long as it spreads all over the CPU, it's fine. And to spread it over the CPU, just use your finger. It's nice and easy. It's horrible stuff to get off your finger once you've done this, but it's all you need to do. So we end up with something like that, you've done it right. And once you've finished spreading it round, you can add your CPU cooler. Yours probably doesn't look like this, yours can be any shape or design, there's lots of different brands, and yours probably doesn't even fit this way. So. Follow your guide that your CPU cooler comes with. You now need to start fitting all the inside cables, like your power supply, your SATA cables, and your front headers. It's like your front USB, your front audio, your front firewire, and all the fun things like that. And if you want to fit your front panel connectors, which you do, you need to refer to this page in your manual. Bear in mind that mine and yours may be different, so do not use mine. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. More motherboards, more power.